everyone, and welcome to another episode of Tuesdays with Tyler. This week, I'm hanging out with Dr. Michael Perry. Dr. Perry, thank you so much for joining us. I want to first start by explaining what we will be doing during our time gotcha. together today. Gotcha. So a lot of people have probably seen the series Hot Ones, where the host and the celebrity, you're playing the role of the celebrity okay. this week, All right. have a conversation, but eat progressively hotter wings during the conversation to see who can last the longest. Mm -hmm. I can't even eat mild wings without ranch, so I'm guessing it'll be you. Right. But we're doing our own version of it this week. We're winging it, and we are having some wings. We're hanging out, we're having a conversation. So let's start at the very beginning. We've got our plane. This is right up my alley. Please feel free. Okay. Dig in. Let me know what you think. Be a food critic if you want. Crispy. Good? Very good. Very good. Now, Mom, I'll probably be talking with my mouth full during this. I apologize. But <laughs> very thankful to our food services for providing these wings. Great wings, as always. So let's get into it. First, let's start with the big news on campus. Something I know everyone is so excited about. <laughs> you being named the permanent provost and Vice President for Academic Affairs. Congratulations on that first Thank off. You. Thank you. But what I ask everyone on Tuesdays with Tyler is why Rockford University? I think mm -hmm. it's so important for our viewers to know why Rockford University, why attend Rockford University, why send my child to Rockford University, and as someone that is now coming on and continuing on in this permanent role as Provost and Vice President of Academic Affairs, why Rockford University? So I came here in 2008. Um, as an English professor, and from the moment I got on campus, I felt a sense of engagement, a sense of opportunity, a sense of um, jump right in, start making a difference, start, l l what is your voice, what do you want to do, how do you want to make this place better, and, and as a faculty member, that was exciting, and if, if that's the way new faculty members are, are feeling, um, I, I felt that even on an increased level with students. Um, because of the size of the place, because of the community feel, because of the um, the flexibility and the closeness that we all have, that um, it's it's just begging for people to come in and not just attend and not just to follow, but to come in and make a difference, to come in with ideas, to come in and create. And I think there's something to be said with our students. You know, they come to campus and they might want to study one area, but they can take classes all over campus. And mm -hmm. and we'll get to that here in a in a second, but. You see people that you know on campus every yeah. day. You see people involved in so many different things, creating that community. It's mm -hmm. it's your family away from your family, and I think we do such a good job here on campus yeah. of creating that. But let's get to the next wings, and All this right. is where it starts to get a little interesting for me. We have our next level of wings. So napkins here, okay. your Rockford University water bottle should you need it. But I, let's dig in. I'm going to interrupt real quick and clarify that that is a chicken nugget. This is a wing. There are no bones in there. Listen, this I, is I, I, my I, wing. You have your wing. Eat your wing, Dr. Perry. <laughs> Ooh, that's hot. Ooh, oh, that is. That, oh, no. We jumped from zero to 100 real quick. This is mild? That's a hot wing. This yeah, is this is mild. Okay. Oh, no. <laughs> this is mild. Thanks. That's real hot. Okay. Now, we talked about students, mm -hmm. and they come to campus, and they have something they're passionate about studying. Mm -hmm. But they get to do so much more while they're on campus. And I think that speaks to the liberal arts education right. that we have here on campus. And a lot of students that we talk with, they aren't 100% sure when they get to Rockford, what is a liberal arts education? What are the benefits of the liberal arts education? Can you talk to us a little bit about that for yeah. us? I mean, a liberal arts education is really um, the, the, the opportunity to study not just in a particular field, but to approach any given topic from a range of perspectives. Right? So you could look at the concept of hunger, and you could look at it from the perspective of a sociology, of, of, of history, of um, what are the um, biological impacts of it, what, what are some ways that that concept of hunger and what that means, is rep how it's represented in, in various literatures, right? And, and, and how you could even articulate that from, a, from an artistic standpoint. And so, I mean, any given topic, you approach from a myriad of perspectives. So it's really about building a sense of the ability to critically think and to approach the world, um, not just receive it, but to recognize it and interrogate it and um, you know, to problem solve and then be able to communicate. And whether we're communicating via written word, whether we're communicating via action, via projects, via art. 
And it really is all about perspective. We get our students that come to this campus and they, you know, they're like, oh, I have to take this class in this area. And then by the time they're done with it, they're like, the lens that I could look through what I'm interested in because of this class and because of this field, it just opens them up to so many new dimensions and taking it beyond what they ever anticipated getting right. here. So a lot of benefits for that with our students and a lot of benefits for us because we are now moving to the next hottest wow. wing and we are up to level three. Yikes. And if it's anything like level two, I'm a little nervous. I need a new napkin. This one stings. This one's not even that hot. That's hot. It just stings. It hurts. Yeah, I think that one is almost. Well, this is a delayed hot. This one comes in later. So okay. So our students get to do so much in the classroom. Mm -hmm. But why stop there? They have so many opportunities outside of the classroom as well. And one of the great ways that they can take advantage of that is through our Student Opportunity Fund. Right. So what is it, what does it provide for students, and what all can they do with that money from the Student Opportunity Fund? It, it's supposed to provide opportunities for students to do things locally. Maybe you want to, a class wants to go to see a, a, a play. Maybe they want to put on an event on campus that has, the, the, these are all academically kind of in, in, um, connected in some way. Maybe longer or larger um, trips that are connected sometimes to classes, sometimes to disciplines where, say, uh, a professor, we talked about biology, going on an archaeology dig, um, maybe uh, uh, going on, on, a, on a trip, a short study trip abroad to, say, Paris. And, and, it's, and then there's also the whole semester-long study abroad that this, uh, that this can help um, so offset some of the funding. They're not, it's, it's not a complete coverage, but it's to help offset and provide opportunities. Mm -hmm. So um, individually and as small groups and as large groups, kind of get together and, and, and get off campus to really build upon what we talked about earlier. What is a liberal arts education? Mm -hmm. it, it's about a, a multifaceted exploration of life from many perspectives. I mean, they really... So, so. so it's a great way for our students in the classroom that maybe want a little bit more even exactly. beyond the classroom can apply for the Student Opportunity Fund, use this and pursue many opportunities both on and off campus, which is great. So it's time for number four, Boy. the final wings, the hot wings, creme de la creme, if you will. It's even, yeah, it's, it's supposed color. to be. The color is yeah, scary. It's gotten much darker in color. Right. Here we go. I didn't bring any ranch. Oh. <laughs> it's real hot. It's not cold. It's not cold. It's not cold wings. So, final question. Mm -hmm. A little bit of a surprise question for you. Right. I want you to look into that camera right there. So we are, we're about an hour west of Chicago, hour and 15 minutes west of Chicago. So we're in Cubs territory. This is Cubs, very Cubs-centric place that we are yes. right now. Yeah. So I just want you to look into this camera. A lot of our viewers, they come from the area, mm -hmm. Cubs fans. And I want you to tell them who your favorite baseball team is. I want you to, you to let them yeah, know. Let, that, let them know. Yes, please, please share with them. Well, the team that has won more Central Division championships than the other four teams in the in the division combined since the inception of the three Ooh. leagues, um, that would be the eleven-time world champion uh, St. Louis Cardinals. Well, and I'm not shy about that. In fact, if you walked into my office in there, you would see. You know, Dr. Perry brings so many great things to this campus. He, you couldn't be a hundred percent perfect, which is fine. <laughs> He's a Cardinals fan. We get it. My mouth's on fire. I'm ready to go chug some milk. Thank you so much, Dr. Perry, for joining us today. Thank Great you opportunities on campus for our students. Any questions that they have, that's what we're here for. Thank you for watching this week's episode of Tuesdays with Tyler. We'll see you next time.